Hey savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today we'll be exploring Farron OS. I'm going to be going through here in the desktop environment of Farron OS, which their default desktop environment is KDE Plasma. We're welcomed here by the tour screen and as soon as you finish installing things, we have the option to start the tour. If you start the tour, you get various different options that helps tweak your Farron OS desktop experience, as well as tweaking the environment here. The one thing I'll say that's really nice about this tour is that you get to select whether or not if you have a virtual machine and you're running your virtual machine in such things as VirtualBox or VMware, you have the option of selecting whether or not you want to install the virtual machine tools right away off the bat. I really like this with Farron OS and I hope to see this on more distributions in the future. I haven't really messed with Farron too much, but there are a couple surprises like this one that really helps set it apart from some of the other distributions. If we hit next, We'll continue on to the transfer tool, which can help you transfer files over from an existing system. Moving on, we have the third party codecs. If videos and music is something that you tend to use and listen to a lot, Farron here makes it easy to install additional codecs so that you have more supported media files. Of course, if you want to do that, you simply click on the install restricted codecs. Moving on to next, we have the desktop layout. If you wanted a layout of a different type, here's Cupertino here, which looks a little bit more like Mac OS or perhaps the Ubuntu Unity layout, which gives you the option of having your taskbar on the left-hand side. I really enjoy this desktop layout and how it's integrated with the Tour app allowing you to switch between whatever desktop you're familiar and comfortable with. We're going with the Farron OS default here just to see how things are laid out here in Farron with their KDE Plasma desktop. Following that, I'll hit next, and now we're given a, just a primer of how to use the applications menu, followed by the window management here at the bottom it shows you. On the right-hand side, we have the taskbar manager or system tray, and as we go through, there's a few more things here. And finally, the search. Here in the last part, we get to look and open up the Farron OS store. So why not? Let's do that real quick and check out what that looks like. By default, I believe Farron here uses flat packs and it looks much like you would find in other Ubuntu distributions. One other thing I'd like to point out is by default, if we search for packages, we'll see that the Synaptic Package Manager is also installed if you like using this more than the native App Store, it's also available. We'll exit out of here and finish out our tour by clicking and selecting a theme. You have the default, the light theme, and the dark theme. I'll stick to the default. You can change this, of course, at any time. Down here in System Settings, the global theme. Hitting next, we have the accent color. If you'd like a different accent color, of course, you can choose it. And we can also configure KD Connect to connect to your Android phone if you have one. It's a nice little tool to use in order to get and send messages here in KD Plasma. Looks like we have even more with the tour, which I really do appreciate because most distributions really don't put a lot of effort into their tour app. They just show you some of the basics, maybe the maybe where things are located on the desktop, which if you're already familiar with the desktop environment from another distribution, it's usually much of the same. But here in Farron, they've really done a great job of giving you a really nice tour experience and letting you set up your system as you go through the tour. We can configure the night color if that's something that you'd like here. And finally, we are all done with the tour and it says for us to enjoy using Farron OS. If you're new and stopping by to watch a review today, make sure to subscribe below and hit that notification bell for more Linux and programming videos. All right, let's enjoy Farron and check things out. One other thing, here on the background in the desktop, we have the welcome screen, which is different than the tour screen. And in here, we have a few things available to us, such as introduction, getting started with Farron, communicating with the community, and even getting involved if we wanted to as a developer. But what I'm interested in is the install software. And what we'll see here is the store here says it uses Flatpak. So as I was mentioning before, I thought it used Flatpaks. It sure does. Now, Snap Apps aren't installed by default, but you can install Snap Support if you'd like to with the click of a button. Also something nice if you do like using Snaps. 
All right, we'll exit out of the welcome screen and let's just check things out around the desktop layout. So of course they're using KDE Plasma, so we'll find much of the KDE utilities in here. And on the bottom right hand corner, we have various things such as the system maintenance, which opens up and checks for various different problems in the system, gives you some system information, as well as crash reports and options. Moving on, we have the update manager, which allows us to make updates to the system very easily here. To the right of that, we have the volume control for both the microphone and the audio output. To the right of the volume, you have your most recent device being used and then your networks to the right of that. If we open this up, we see whether or not our connection is being used here as well as the current wired or wireless connections. We can disconnect or connect a new one. And at the very far right hand corner, we have a few more status and notification things that pertain to KD mainly. So it's nice to know you can access KD Connect or the keyboard or clipboard from here. Moving on to the top middle, we have the current time and date if you click on it, followed by a calendar on the right hand side and you'll be warned of any events that you currently have going on for the day on the left hand side. You can turn off and on notifications very simply by setting the do not disturb if you have the notification service enabled. On the left hand side, we already looked at the welcome screen. You can also send back or report an issue to Farron. Change up your global theme if you double click on this. They have many themes pre-installed for you already. And to change a the theme, it's as simple as clicking and hitting apply. You can also get more global themes by clicking on get new global themes. And we see that there are plenty available for download and quick install, which can really help spruce up your desktop if that's something you're interested in. Closing out of here, we'll discard our changes and move down to the left hand side. If you went ahead and made it this far, please hit that like button for me. It really does help me out. All right, let's explore what they have available to us as far as applications go here in Farron. Looks like Vivaldi is their default web browser. Files is going to use Nemo, the file manager. Moving on to a few more things here. Since we're in all applications, let's actually drop down a subcategory here on the left to check out things by category. So in the graphics, we have a document scanner, Krita, LibreOffice Draw, Ocular and Photos. Under Internet, we have Jiri, a mail client, Vivaldi, and other various web browsers if you want them installed. And then KD Connect to connect your phone up. Multimedia gives you access to Cheese and the VLC Media Player, a great media player with many, many available codecs built in. Moving on to Office, we have a calendar available as well as the LibreOffice Suite and Ocular. Science and Math just offers the LibreOffice Math. And then in Settings, we have the various different things you can change on the system or get for the system. You can access your Synaptic Package Manager from here or the App Store as well. There's System Maintenance, System Settings, Update Manager. You can change the theme colors or what's on the login window as well as configure the firewall, which is UFW on this system. Opening up disks, we can see that the file system here by default is an ext4 formatted file system and we'll keep moving on. System offers more system settings as well as system information, including driver manager, which we can start up real quick and check out what's available in here. The driver manager has detected no proprietary drivers currently installed or in use, so nothing's being displayed here. But you can use this to select between your proprietary drivers. Let's say you had an NVIDIA graphics card and you have the proprietary drivers installed. You could select whether or not you want to use those in here. Console is the default terminal and I'll start that up. That way I can use that in a moment. Finally, utilities here offers us system utilities such as a calculator, a compression tool, character mapping, again, disks. It's funny that they have an emoji selector here as well, the file browser, and a text editor, Kate, Latte, Maps, and Spectacle. On the top, we can search for our applications. So if I wanted to search for a terminal, 
it would return console up here. Of course, you can search for whatever application that you might, may or may not need. On the right hand side of the search bar, we have options such as logging out, shutting down the computer, or restarting it. If you hit the shutdown, you'll get options such as sleep, restart, shut down, and log out as well. If we exit out, let's check out a few things in our console. All right, and taking a look at the aptitude repositories, we see that we have various different Ubuntu repos. And with that being said, Farron is Linux Mint and Debian based, and we can see that it has access to the Focal, Focal Updates, Focal Backports, and Focal Security Repositories. We can also check out the software sources in order to get a list of additional repos. And the additional repos that are contained in here are Google Stable, Vivaldi Stable, and the Wine HQ Focal. I believe I read somewhere that Wine was installed by default, but I'm not sure about it. I haven't seen any indication of that so far, and I believe there was even an option to install it in their store, so maybe it's not there by default. The official mirrors here are the Farin OS from their GitLab and the Ubuntu base Focal. Here it's using the Ubuntu archives. As far as PPAs, there aren't any enabled by default, and that's really it as far as the software sources go. All right, let's run a few more things here in Farin just to check out the system resource usage. I'll run HTOP, and here we're currently using 1.27 gigs, which isn't all too much for KD Plasma, but I've been up for 30 minutes and running various different windows and programs. Here on the right hand side, we have 126 tasks with 261 threads running, and there are a bunch of processes in the background. And then as far as system settings go, if we run NeoFetch, we have a Farin OS running with 2,297 packages installed, Bash 5.0. We're currently using the KDE Plasma desktop environment with the KWIN window manager using the Breeze window manager theme. The theme icon for the desktop environment is Farin OS Plasma, and the icons are inspired for Plasma. The default terminal, as mentioned before, is console with the Deja Vu Sans Mono 9 font. The kernel is at 5.4 as of this release, which was just introduced to us in November of 2020. And just to check out things once more after a reboot, we'll check out HTOP to see the system resources being used up. So here on a restart, it's around 760 megabytes. That's pretty good for KDE Plasma. They've really gotten it down over the last few years. And the tasks here are 108 and the current thread count is 182. You can see that the uptime has only been a minute and 32 seconds and all the various services running out in the background. In my opinion, Farron is overall a fairly nice distribution here, tailored towards a general audience. And I think it really sets itself apart with the tour app that allows you to really set up your system according to how you need it set up quickly before getting lost into distribution itself. Well, that's about it. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comment section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.